up guys welcome to my youtube channel my name is Beryl Atieno and this is the Atieno B show where we talk about lifestyle and entertainment now this being our very first video and a project so dear to me I would like to start our first conversation with someone very dear to me this is a person who's been with me throughout my life he's, he's been su supportive guys he is a teacher he is a disciplinarian and uh, he is one of those people who has got life challenges as well so one of the life challenges that we are going to talk about today that he's been through is alcohol now another one said that never underestimate the strength of a recovering person because they've walked roads that you can never imagine and without any further ado i would like to introduce you guys to my dad karibu sana dadi kwenye show uh, welcome to this show. My name is uh, Eric Omondi Ochuodo. Now guys, you heard from him. This is my dad. Na itua Eric Omondi Ochuodo. Amekuwa na mimi throughout this journey. He is an amazing. Some of you know knows him as Mwalimu. Hapa kwetu watu wanamuita tu Mwalimu, Mwalimu, Mwalimu. So, my dad has had his struggles as a person. One of the struggles that he's gone through so much that has affected him is alcohol. So on this show we are going to talk how alcohol has affected him. Vitu kama hizo tu alafu tujua atuambie atuambie tu venye jani yake imekuwa him growing up imekuwaje alisoma wapi. Sawa sawa. Oh. Okay, okay. so dad. Yeah. Uh what's your name? Oh, once again my names are called Eric Mondi Chudo. Uh -huh. I come from Kisumu East sub location, Kolong East location, that is Kisumu County. Yes place called Nyalenda. Oh, guys, tumetoka Nyalenda, tuko ghetto. Right now we are in our house. So this is our place. Okay? This is how it looks. So I'm going to ask that some few questions like uh, how was it for you growing up? Oh, well, it wasn't so easy because currently I'm 56. I'm approaching 56 years old. Mm -hmm. So it has not been so easy growing up, you know, the slum area, life in the slum has not been very easy. For you to come out of the slum, it needs a lot of dedication because there are so many challenges. For which one of them is alcoholism, mm. that is drug and substance abuse in general. Mm. So, Dada Masema, one of the challenges that he's gone through is alcohol. So, let's talk about alcohol, like alianza na wapi alianza kunywa pombe wapi and how did it even affect him so dad where did you st when did you start taking alcohol a uh, long time ago i can't remember the exact year but then what i can recall is that i started drinking when i was still in primary school ah. before i i think i think roughly when i was in class 6 standard 6 well i say hata mimi pia sikuwa najua I'm just getting to learn from it right now. Ajawai niambia hii. So let, let, we are in this journey together. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys, let's just hold on and hear from him much more. Yeah? Yeah, I started when I was around class 6. When I was around in class 6. Uh -huh. That's when I took it. I used to take small quantities. When I did class 7, during that time, we used to do what we call CPE, Certificate of Primary Education. Uh -huh. And I joined high school. After joining high school, now I became a professional alcohol drinker in 1984. That is when I was in form two. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay. That is 1984 in form two. During that time, I used to go to school at Cardinal Matunga High School in Musocho. That is somewhere in Kisi. Uh -huh. Life was not so easy. Money was scarce to get, but then what made me again to get so much into it there was a cousin of mine who unfortunately unfortunately was employed as an administration police next to my school mm -hmm. so when he realized that i was in that school in the locality within kisi all the way from kisumu to kisi he came to school he visited me but then the advantage was that alcohol now i could get it so easily from the culprits that they are doing, the, the alcohol that they had, they had nabbed to the chief's camp over the weekends, I used to go there. I used to take small quantities at first, then I now became a professional. So every weekend, I could drink. After drinking over the weekend, I go back to school and do my studies. 
Wow, guys, in class 6. Class 6, guys, class 6, my dad had already started taking alcohol. And you guys, you can see the way we look alike. This is my dad. <laughs> Actually, my real dad. So that, uh, yeah, my biological dad. How, how was your first experience like? Oh, it was awful. Uh -huh. The first day when I was in class 6, I was sent to go and uh, bring potion, me, maize flour. Uh -huh. You know, during that time, we never used to have potion mills around. So, for those who know Kisumu, the distance from Nyalenda to Kibuye, mm -hmm. that is next to Russia, those sides. Which year was that again? That was way back in the early 80s. Early oh. 80s. Okay. That was around 1980, 1979, 1980. Mm -hmm. So, we used to carry the maize from Nyalenda. We trek, we walk on foot up to Kibuye to go and grind the maize. So my first experience, it was very harrowing. After grinding the maize on our way back, we had to branch with my elder brother, the one I'm following. Unfortunately, he had passed on. Yeah. So by the time we reached Nyalenda from Kibuye, we branched at a certain club. It was not even really a pub, it was a club. Busa was being brewed there, and Chana was there. But since Busa was not my favorite, I opted to take Chana. You already had a favorite at that moment. I already moment. had a favorite. <laughs> my, brother, okay. my brother's favorite was Buza, so we could take him up to Barogoro Moja or to Barogoros in one sitting. What? Me, I called for Changa. They gave me Changa. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it was so hot. You know, the way Kisumu is, Kisumu is very hot. The sun was shining. So I became overwhelmed. I could not even manage to carry the debel portion I mean the, the maize flour that we had gone to grind so reaching home the distance was not so easy mm -hmm. I had to get a blackout next to a tree there so later on my mom was called by that time my mom was still alive she sent somebody came and picked the maize flour and then I was carried from there up to home the next thing I realized that I was sleeping under a tree a mango tree at home wow guys Listen, listen, listen how alcohol does people. Uh, alcohol in a kupanya tabia zingine zenye hata we mwenye ugombewe. Already the first experience he was carried and it was awful. So let's see after, after, akapatikana karibu na maembe and then what happened to that? Well, uh, how, how, how did your mother react and now my shosh, my, my Oh, dad. I got a thorough beating because my mom didn't know that I was taking alcohol. That is when she realized she left me to sleep on waking up i had to get a therapy <laughs> okay. that one didn't deter me from taking it so uh -huh. i used to sleep by the phone i go i take from friends <laughs> somehow but then maybe it was nature i don't know whether it was uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. so when i went to high school i got a chance because now there i was having freedom since during the weekends we were given time so I could go out of school, go to the chief's camp, to that my cousin, sometimes he had gone on duty, and then he used to be with the kid. Now that is high school? That was in high school, oh, where? when I was in form two. Where, where did you, Ulisoma Wapi High School? High school in Ulisoma, Kadim Lutunga High School in Socho. Uh -huh. I joined in 1982, and I left in 1985 after doing my KCC, that is all level. So there, Jana was so much, it was so rampant. So that's when I became a professional Jana drinker. I drank and I drank. And when I came back after Hong Kong, now I was a professional. Oh, so you went up to Form 4? I went up to Form 4. Mm -hmm. After Form 4, I passed. I did my A-levels from 5 and from 6. Uh, how did this affect you, even your grades? Did it even affect your grades or you were just born a bright person? It really affected my grades because now from Kisi I came to Kisumu and I engaged in drinking. That drinking I thought I was bright. Okay, I was bright. I can't say I wasn't bright. I engaged into drinking and that one made me fail. I never failed but I passed. I missed the mark with one point to join campus. So I never joined campus. So so, so just, just a moment. How, how were grades being uh, graded then? Okay, during that time, in all levels, we used to have distinctions, credits, and then passes. So what did you get? 
So I managed to get credits, that is division one, that was division one, the first one, then division two, and then division three, level 15 for me. So I managed the division two, of which enabled me to join a level that was advanced level, whereby I got subsidiaries, three subsidiaries and two passes, which could not allow me. I had to miss with one point. You, you, you were clever. Points. Yeah, <laughs> you are you are a bright smart. person from the beginning. Yeah. Which was your, your favorite subject when you were in school? Oh, I was a jack of all trades and a master of none. Almost every uh -huh. subject I could have done. Guys, except guys, listen to that kizungu, eh? A jack of all trades and and a master of none. This is an English teacher, by the way. <laughs> yeah? That is to say, I was an average student in all subjects. Okay. Mathematics was my best subject. When I went to high school. It was chemistry, biology, mm -hmm. physics was also there, geography I liked. Mm -hmm. Basically, it, my best subject now was English. English was my best subject because I liked reading. I developed a culture of reading. Mm -hmm. And even uh, when I was going to school, my dream career was to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a journalist. I even joined journalism club during high school. You ne you've never told me that since I'm taking over you. Yeah, <laughs> you never knew. Because even right now, there's a journalist, I think if you ask him, he'll tell you he's called one Elias Makori. Uh -huh. Elias Makori, I think, uh, I don't know whether he's in TV these days, but then he used to be there in KTN. You studied together? Elias Makori were in journalism club at Kanyan Mutunga High School. Oh. At that time, I was ahead of him. He was a class behind him. Yeah, Elias Makori, wherever you are, big up to my dad, big up here. Yeah, this is the one Eric Omondi, they used to know me as Eric Omondi and Bobby Ogola because of my football prowess. Mm -hmm. One funny thing, I used to drink and I used to play football and I was in the first school team. Wow. That is it. Wow. Guys, this guy is amazing. Huh? This guy is amazing. Uyu ni mwalimu. Sisi hapa kuritu ni kwatu ndachapua. I used to be number last first of all. Let me just share with you this. Na kikuchapa na chukua kichwa yako na ingiza chini ya chini ya kimya meza. Matako inabaki tu nje. If you try raising your your your, your head up, then he beats you thoroughly like something else. So guys, let's take a short break and then we will be right back. Thank you. So hello guys, welcome back to this show once again. So now we've heard how uh, his the first experience of my dad was how it was it was very bad so now uh, let's begin our next with uh, now he's done with school okay yes sasa amemaliza shule ameshamaliza shule and uh, he's now processing his work so how was it for you after school well it wasn't so easy after school because now that i've been introduced to alcohol i had to need money i need money to go and take some alcohol and some other things that I might need as a young man. So I decided to venture in the outside world. I went to a place called Moroni through the assistance of my brother-in-law. That is the husband to my sister. I went there and I secured a job, though it was not a permanent job, it was a casual job, with a company called Agrochemical and Food Company. Mm -hmm. There I did a casual job for roughly one year, around 11 months. Now, which year was that? That was way back in 1989. Because I finished my, 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 my A-levels in 1987. That's when I did my A-levels. In fact, it was in 1988. That is when I went there. I did casual for about 11 months. For which later on, after casual, I used to do odd jobs like slashing the compound outside the gate. After that, they read they realized a the potential in me that I had something upstairs. How did they realize that? Because you were just slashing. I was just slashing, but through the help of my supervisor, my supervisor, okay, okay. the department was welfare department. Uh -huh. So during discussions and the way I was articulating issues, they realized, and then during their management meeting, I think it emerged that I was uh, at least somewhere I had something upstairs. <laughs> the way I was reasoning, uh, they liked the way I was reasoning, okay. and I was diligent in my work because during that time they didn't know that I was taking alcohol. Oh, so from slashing they gave you a promotion? So I was given, given a promotion. I was called to go to the HRDM's office, Human uh -huh. Resource Development Manager's office. Okay. On going there, I was told that I was being relocated, I was being transferred from the welfare section as a casual. 
So I went to the quality control department, that is the laboratory department. So when I went to the laboratory department, I was assigned some duties. I was told that I was going to be on probation for three months. Okay. I worked there on probation for three months. After that three months, it was again renewed. Another three months of another three months probation. After probation, I got a letter of confirmation that I was now permanently employed. I was so happy because it was a well-paying job. I was a quality controller, I was a lab analyst. In fact, in fact I started with a lab laboratory assistant. We used to work two people, there was a lab analyst and a lab assistant, so I was assisting the analyst. What does agrochemical do too? Agrochemical, it deals with a variety of things, more so like baker's yeast, active dry yeast. Oh. They process uh, this alcohol, so I said this is it because I used to drink. <laughs> so when I realized that alcohol was there uh. and I was in the laboratory, mm. I could do the quality tests mm. to know which one is good and which one is bad. Yeah. So I got into it. Oh. Not, not so much though because I was very careful okay. to not to tamper with, to tamper with my job. Oh. So I worked in agrochemical for around nine years, in fact ten years, one that is, year. That is from 89? From 1988, 1988. in fact 1989, uh -huh. for ten years. So one year I worked as a casual in the welfare section slashing, the other nine years I worked in the quality control laboratory. Okay. Yes. You were still drinking at this particular time? I used to drink during that time. And so you drink and you go to work? I used to drink and go to work because there we could do the dilution, you know these spirits. They are the spirits that were taken to, during that time they used to take it in a tank cast to Mombasa, mm -hmm. and then they are ferried over uh, abroad. They make these vodkas, one seven and the rest, and then they are brought back to the country and sold for us. So we had known the trick. Okay. That through the process, production process of this, there is what we call, we used to call rectified spirit and ethanol, Mm -hmm. that was being taken there and it was very concentrated it was very calm so we had mastered the dilution ratio the ratio in which we are diluting water okay. to alcohol okay. used for consumption uh -huh. so that's what pulled us through so we were big drinkers <laughs> how many were you? you also had some friends in your local definitely even from other departments so it was a network we had a network from other departments production department quality control lab even the personnel staff because that was a game to get it was not so easy security was tight were and there cameras about there were no cameras during that time there were no cameras oh yeah so it's only if the supervisor gets you then you're in problems now this is still that same supervisor when you have a promotion from slash you have to let her for you department no this one now was another supervisor uh -huh. uh, in the production department, that was welfare department. Each department had a supervisor and each department had a, a manager. So the overall manager was the general manager, there was the works manager, and the rest, most of these people, and me, me. My job, the good thing, my job was okay. It was up to the, the standard. Mm -hmm. So during our spare time, we also used to go to the parks to take some beers, like I told you, the spirits and the rest. So it was a... I'd rather say it was a good time during that time because money was also not in our bed. Money, money was not a problem. Money now was not a problem. The problem now was how to use it. And the way I was using it, it never covered well for me. Yeah, yeah. In fact, in fact, during that time, I was not very careful. I could have even ended up not even money. I could not even have a family by now, as I speak. Oh, so you, 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 you started working first. Mm. Now, in that department, when you were promoted, that's when you got married. Yes, I worked first as a casual, and then I was promoted in that department. After some years, that's when I got the best of my heart. That's when I married. Uh -huh. yes. You married your sweetheart, who is my mother now. I married your mother during that time. Uh -huh. You know, as a young man, you know, girls were there. Yeah. Yeah, we used to have them. Yeah. And then since money was there, <laughs> life, was, <laughs> life was rosy. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, so we, we really used to have a good time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But then I later on came to realize that it was not all that good for me. But mm, because, because the alcohol part of it. Because of the alcohol part of it. 
Did it ever affect your marriage immediately the, the, the moment you got married? Now you are in your first early stages of marriage. How was it like with alcohol and with her as my mother? In our first early stages in my marriage, everything was okay because I was a little bit careful. I knew I had a wife, so I was controlling myself. But I knew from the back of my mind that I'm an alcoholic. I started drinking. Even her, she never knew that I used to drink. She... Yes, I went to Kidogo. She never knew that I was a heavy drinker. Yeah, but you used to take her out. I remember kuna siku moja, kuna siku moja ulituacha kwa nyumba mimi na Clinton. There's my 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 yeah my follower. Clinton, alafu mkaenda, I don't know where it was, then we woke up. Guys, waking up, tukapata sisi hata hakuna mtu kwa nyumba. We started walking, kwen, tunasikia tu, oh, makelele mahali, somewhere else, there was a person somewhere else. Walienda na mama yangu. My dad used to treat my mom nicely, by the way. Yeah, during that time, we used to have India party, and India party, during the night, children were not allowed to attend. Uh-huh. So that's where we went. Sometimes we used to go to joints. Unfortunately, she, she, she never used to drink. She was a teetotaller. Uh, what is that? Teetotaller, that is somebody who doesn't take alcohol totally. Oh, called teetotaller? Called teetotaller. T-W-E-T-O. T-A. Is that L-E-R. an English word? It's an English word. You can check in the dictionary. Teetotaller. <laughs> okay. I told you English was my favorite subject. Uh. I like English. Even right now, I still like English. Mm-hmm. I eat English. I sleep English. I walk English. Everything I do is English, English, English. Eh, sisi hapa kwetu kisema kizungumbaye. <laughs> Unambiwa, no, it is not like that. It is not supposed to be like that. Eh? Yeah. So that is my dad for you. Uh-huh. And then, so, how was it with her? So it was okay from the beginning. Life was okay. Because, because I could fend for the family. Money was there. It only came to be worse later on. Where now money was scarce due to heavy drinking. I now got into it and I used to drink heavily. So you find sometimes even it reached a point where by even paying rent was becoming a little bit problem. Where were you staying then? During that time the company had not built houses for staff so I used to stay in town. So in town the rent during that time it was not much but then money was not there. Mm-hmm. The little that I got ended up in uncall. After doing your shopping, there was nothing totally that I could save because of that, that drinking ability. Then why did you stop working? Okay, I worked for some time. The way I've told you, I took 10 years, 9 years in the, in the laboratory. But then alcohol was also a contributor. Mm. Since I used to work, and then you know workplaces, there are a lot of things. I was in the lab, a sample was brought that I was supposed to analyze not realizing that the beaker that I was to use uh-huh. had uh, some chemical, this one that we used to mix spirit with, methylated spirit. Okay. Yeah, so I never rinsed it proper, properly. Uh-huh. So the analysis, the result that I was given, uh-huh. it was just okay. okay. On realizing that this sample that was brought with a tanker had been contaminated. So our whole tanker was drained into the storage tank. That one contaminated the whole tank. And then I was summoned to the work manager's office. I was told, Eric, do you know what you've done? Mm. You've made company lost almost one million. Yeah. I said no. According to the results, the certificate that I gave, my work was perfect. Maybe the offloaders, those who are offloading, they are the ones the mess was at the point there. So I was put to task, did you go to the sample point? Did you sample yourself? Because the procedure is that if you have to take a sample, you as an analyst, you go to the sampling point, you take a sample of your own, you are certain that everything, because it's to do with the quality, mm-hmm. everything was okay. Yes. So I overlooked that. As a result, the whole storage tank got contaminated. So I was told to, I was given a caution letter, it was not even suspension, caution letter to desist from that. Little did I know that the worst is going to happen later on. It was like a termination letter and you were not told? That one was caution at first, oh. like warning, there was no suspension. So you so went back to work? I went back to work, I worked for around... After, so after how long? Around two days. Oh, okay. Around two days I was summoned to the Human Resource Department mm-hmm. and I was told there is a letter of yours here. I can vividly remember during that day, that, that time I went, I reported on duty by noon because we used to work in shift. Mm-hmm. So I reported on duty by 
noon, midday. After two hours, by around 2 p.m., I was summoned to go to the HR games office. Since the laboratory was upstairs and the HR games was down, when I went there, I never found the human resource department the development manager. Mm -hmm. I just found the secretary. Okay. So the secretary gave me an envelope for the days is your letter. I was given a black book to sign here. It never occurred to me that it was going to be a termination letter. Me, I just signed, not knowing what was inside. On reaching the doorstep outside, something like an instinct told me just to look at this letter, to open the envelope. From opening the envelope, I realized that I was terminated. My duties had been terminated due to that issue that occurred some two to three days back. Hey, how was the experience then? At that particular moment, how did you feel? During that time, things ran into my mind. I thought of a lot of things. How am I going to climb the stairs back to my workplace? My chemist, our supervisor used to be a chemist. They are called chemists. That was my supervisor. What am I going to tell him or her? What am I going to tell my quality control manager? So it seems all these things were being done with the knowledge of these my superiors. Mm -hmm. So there was little they could do because these people were held there they are decided. So there was not much. But my work was like that. So on realizing that, I gathered courage, I put the letter in my pocket, I just climbed the stairs. I never talked to anybody, so I saw the chemist, she was a woman, looking at me suspiciously. Mm -hmm. Me, I just went on with my duty. No why, why would she look at you suspiciously? They had the information <laughs> oh. that my job had been terminated. Oh, but they never told you? But they never told me, so they just wanted the appropriate time to release from me. Uh -huh. So I started working because you're working for eight hours. If you report by noon, by 8 p.m., you're on a reading ban. So if I never worked until 8 p.m., at around uh, 3. That is the same day that you were attending? Same, same day uh -huh. with a letter in my pocket. I have not told anybody. I have not even called my wife back at home, uh -huh. not even my mom back at home, not even my brothers. So I just continued working, and then the chemist and supervisor called me. At Eric, come around. Uh, following the events that have occurred, you can't continue working like this until 8. I'd rather you what you do, you just go back to the house. Tomorrow, come to the HR Games office, do the handing over. Because during that time, the company had given me a house. I was, I was living in the, I was staying in the staff houses. So the keys to the door, everything of the company that I had. So I also never made any quarrel. What I did, I removed the lab coat that I had, I put into, into the locker, we had lockers. Now, which, which year was this that, that now you were terminated? That was in the year 1999. Okay. That is in the year 1999, because I went there in 1988-89. At that particular moment, that that time that you used to work, kuna wale watoto wenu ulikuna wa support financially? Yeah, 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 yeah. like my second follower was still in high school, Kisona Day. And uh, you were supporting him? Uh, I was him? supporting him in his paying for school fees. How did, did that affect, affect affected you? That one also affected him because uh, now there are no funds. Though fortunately there are so many in the family. My elder brother took charge and then had to complete. Because oh, your elder brother was working by then? Yeah, during that time my elder brother was working with the Standard Chartered Bank. Okay. So he's the one who delegated to me that now you are working You'll be taking care of the school fees for this boy and this boy and this boy. Ah. Yeah. Not only that, but there are some others who depended on me. Mm -hmm. So everything had to be difficult. And your time. parents? My parents, I only had a single parent. That was my mom. Because my dad, unfortunately, my dad died way back in 1979. Oh, that was too early. It was... How old were you then? During that time I was in class 5, so you can imagine a student in class 5. Wow. I can vividly remember that very very day when my dad died, because we used to be friends. Mm. Even though I was in class 5, he used to like me, I also used to like him. How was life for you with your dad? How, how was he with you and him? How, how was your relationship with him? Okay, it was a cordial relationship, even though I took a little time <laughs> with my dad. Just slow okay. down, eh? Okay. <laughs> Just slow down. <laughs> Just slow down, we're going to Okay, let me use simple English. Please. My dad was good. Uh -huh. The little time I had with him, I enjoyed it. But then I took uh, I took very few years knowing him. Unfortunately, he had to leave me. Uh -huh. I was in class five, and even during that time, I was doing my science paper. 
I can still recall. Oh, okay. Uh, detail question one. During that time, you were given exams. You mm -hmm. write, they write on the wall, on the board, blackboard. It's called blackboard. So they used to write for you an exam on the blackboard. Questions they were writing. Yeah. Questions were being written on the blackboard. So you you only you only write the answers. You copy the question the way it's written on the blackboard, uh -huh. and then you answer. You write the answer down at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So there was a teacher. One Mr. Onyango was my science teacher in class five, way back. Then my dad died. Mm He's -hmm. the one who called me, Eric. We are needed outside. On reaching outside, I can't do anything. I never knew because I'd left my, my dad. He was at the Ramuga Jingo being a teacher at the Carol Hospital. What was the problem? The problem he had a swelling on his left leg, oh, okay. which we later on realized that uh, this one is what we call it's some disease we call septicemia. It was somehow like a wound, septic wound. Though it had not developed septic, it had not become septic. Mm -hmm. So during upon his death, we realized it's called septicemia. Mm -hmm. what, what's the cause of it? It's like a septic, like in, it, it's infection on the oh, wound. Okay. There was infection on the wound. That's what it was. Oh, sorry. So from school on reaching home, I realized people were men in our compound. Everybody was crying. That's when it occurred to me that my dad had died. You left him in a very bad condition when you were going to school that day. The previous day I was with him, he wasn't all that bad. In fact, by that day, I, I knew after finishing my exam, we had to go to hospital to see him. He wasn't all that serious. He never even took a week in the hospital. Oh, okay. Uh, so it was so abrupt like that. So after the death of my dad, I stayed with my mom. I can say I was a product of a single mom. Okay. And I can even say that this is the main reason as to why I engage in alcohol. I can't oh, say it's me. Because now the, the presence of Dadada Kua Karibu. Yes. So now you just grow up with a single mom. Yes. Now the single mom here kuna vitu mingi za kufanya. You want to take you. How many were you in your family first? Exactly. That's what I wanted to say. In our family, we were ten. We were ten children. Wow. That is three girls and seven boys. Wow. My mom was single. Okay. Everybody was still in school, apart from my elder brother who was doing his A levels. So during that time, my elder brother was supposed to join university. He was called to University of Nairobi in September. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, my dad died in July. Mm -hmm. It was in July when he was two months to join college. Mm -hmm. So he had to drop his ambitions of joining the university to look for a job to bring us up. I appreciate him because he's the one, in fact, he's the one who paid for my school fees. I started from class five up to class seven, from form one to form six, he's the one who paid my school fees. Mm -hmm. So I give much praise to him for the work that he did in my life. That is great. Yes, so my dad died at an early age. Had my dad been there, I don't think these things could be, could have happened like this. I never, I couldn't, I couldn't have gotten into heavy drinking the way I did. Was he always a strict person? My dad was strict, though he was drinking, but he was strict. He used to wake you very early in the morning. You go to the chamber, you dig with him. He reports on duty. When he comes back by around ten, and I will be to fike pale to malize in chamber and you to dig in mm. That is if you are not going to school. Like if you are going to school, you make sure everything is perfect, everybody reports to school. On coming back from school, you have to carry firewood on your head, the mboga, kama ni skuma wiki, yao kama ni kunde, you carry it, you come with the firewood, mm. you fetch water, you <laughs> light fire, okay. on a dondo is in mboga. So life was, in, it was interesting, but then it was difficult. It was difficult, yeah, difficult I can imagine. Then interesting. Yeah. And then you have to spare your time for study. Mm -hmm. So if you are not born, bright naturally my dear you are about to fail i mm. tell you you are about to fail alikuwa na wachapa yes to some extent akupenda kuwachapa in general akupenda kuwachapa sana sana mimi uh, you were his most favorite i was his most favorite because i also knew how to take care of my, you know, myself uh, I, I used to fear cane uh, so anything that is going to make me be cane you try and avoid I tried and avoid okay. and then advantage that i had there are some other people who are in front of me. So we to come up to let maji, lighting firewood, cooking, mm -hmm. they could do. That's what <coughs> made me not even know how to cook until very late in life. When I started staying alone, that is when I started getting to know how to cook. Mm -hmm. 
Because now I can cook for my room. But you, you were a very good cook. You used to cook even for us when mom was around. <laughs> yeah, because my mom taught us. Yeah, you, in our house, you. in our house, there was no woman, there was no man. Yeah, Everybody you, you, you are a very rare breed. Yeah, yeah you, you are very different. You used to work as up sometimes in the morning when we were going to school and then when we were going to chai. Kama kuna kitu ya kunywa chai, unatutengenezea slice ya ugali, nyilibaki jana, alafu tunaenda shule. Eh? Because, the reason as to why I was doing that, it's because I wanted for you good life. Mm. Eh, I knew the importance of education, that's why I was doing that. And I knew I had passed through going to school without anything in the stomach, you can do anything. Yeah, I, I know. That. That's why when there was nothing like bread, the leftovers, mm. your ugali, now, take another slice, Missouri. Even right now, right, right now, I can still cook for you guys when you are there. Yeah, yes, this is easier to easy kubali. Very, very flexible. Why are you going to tell you to eat it? kubali sahi. So that is basically that's how my life was. So, so now you have been, uh, you you have the barua termination letter, okay. yeah. So now you have the termination letter. Mpaka jioni mefika. Sasa unaenda nyumbani. Okay, now by around three, mm -hmm. uh, that letter, when I'd been told you go back to the house, I said it's okay, I don't have a problem. Nika Muliza, should I give you this key to the locker? Akasema, we enda tu nai, kesho sa hile unakuja kufanya handing over, you bring me that key. Uh -huh. So I also locked everything, I went to my house. <clears throat> it's very funny, when I reached my house, mama watoto wa nikuwepo. Mm -hmm. Siku muambia chochote. Nika ingia tu kwa nyumba, nika enda kwa bathroom, nika oga, nika kakidogo, nika uleza, hey, baba masi, kwa nini leo umerudi mapema? Mm. Nika nyamaza, because I was thinking on how to break this. This news to her. News. Was she working there? During that time, my mom, you, your mom was not working. She was just in the house, except for small businesses, like fish businesses. Mm -hmm. And during that time, over the weekends, that's when she used to go there. So when I gained my courage and my conscience, I told her that the worst has happened. Mm -hmm. I said, what is it? 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 I was guilty. I couldn't come back home because my mom was still there. My younger brother was in Nairobi. By that time, he had been transferred to Nairobi to break this news. I was guilty. I just felt like staying there and vanishing Kanisa. But then, Mama was totally encouraged. She said, no, you can't be like that. This thing has to be told. Mm. Your mom has to know. She mm. said, she volunteer. She said, she was going to be a volunteer. She said, she was going to be a volunteer. She said, she was going to be a volunteer. She said, she was going to be a volunteer. She said, she was Kazi mm. so we plan for Rudi. We started planning on how we can come home, organized for transportation for our things. I also went to the factory to do the clearances because I never wanted to go into nitty gritties. So I just did the clearances, whatever was there that could be there. Any deals that I was supposed because they were saying that I was summarily dismissed. I was supposed to go home without anything. Mm. But then being in the union, it helped me so they had to process my deals. Okay. So there was a check that was written to me and some small amount that could enable me to transport my things. Mm. Of which I had what I had transport, the lorry, carried my things, I turned in over everything I left. The company didn't carry for you anything? Company didn't carry for me anything, but I just had to organize with the company driver. There was friends because I had so many friends. Oh, okay. So there was some lorry that was coming for inspection in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. So we organized for rain. I took almost one week there. So we organized a Kanyambia on Wednesday in Takwani Kiyanda Kisumu. So instead of using a lot of money, we Ngoje, the Chukwai lorry, Taweka Bituzako, and Taweka Mpakanyambia. So on that Wednesday, he came, we packed everything in that lorry. I only left mattress and one stool in that house. Why? And they were your things? Because I was to go back. Okay. There were some clearances that I was supposed to go oh, back and make. Okay. They are not completed with me. Mm. So we came. Kasa umesha kuwa terminated, watu wa mebebana. How many kids did you have there? During that time I had four kids. At that time when we were coming back here? Yes. So we were four, the four of us? The four of you, that is... Uh, 
That is mercy. That is mercy, burial, parental and babies. Oh, okay. Yeah, the last one is babies. So now we are we are home. We are back home. Yeah. So we are back home. How was life now at home? Now or you are now going back again to do your clearance when you come back? So I went back, I did my clearance, I was given a check. During that time it was around forty four thousand Kenyan shillings. That was a lot of money. It was a lot of money. And then uh, cash money was given around 10,000. So I came back home, loaded. Mm. The worst part of it, I also engaged in drinking. Mm, 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 After termination, I also engaged in drinking. That was now the worst part of it. The good part of it, so it wasn't so easy for me. It wasn't so difficult for me. All those my things had to come to my house. I had a house during that time. Yeah. But then my Isha and Mumba, since I had money, it wasn't so difficult. I engaged into drinking alcohol. I took alcohol excessively mm. to an extent that sometimes I could sleep in the drainage. It was so horrible. Sometimes I could be carried to the house. So it was an embarrassment. Was it a way of expressing how hurt you were? Or is that just you expressing yourself? Mm, I can't tell what happened, but then now... It was now worse. It was now worse. It was worse than the way I was in Nairobi now. Mm. Yeah, this one now was not, it was uncontrollable. So I don't know because of the influence back at home, the number of people that I used to get, and the way I used to get it so easily. Mm -hmm. So it really, it almost interfered with my marriage. I had four children during that time. The first born, I'll go and end up from class eight by that time. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So life was not so easy, coupled with that, also this check of 44,000. We talked with my elder brother, he was a banker, so I gave that trust to him. Mm. I had to take this check, I don't know what became of me. Mm. I gave him that check of 44,000, and I Nairobi, I gave him to me a pesa. Your pesa pia ika henda, ika potea. Ika potea hivu. Ika potea hivu. That was a lot of frustration. Sa kuuliza, unaambi watu, unatumi watu peanuts. Mm. Nothing was coming. Wow. So it wasn't so easy. Yeah. I had nothing to do. My first one went and from one. Fortunately, by the time we entered from one, that is when I landed some contract job with. During that time, it was uh, this IEBC. During that time it was called what? We were cut your kiwitu. ELCK, yeah, 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 yeah. Electoral Commission of Kenya. San Kafanya Yokazi Electoral Commission of Kenya. We were paid, it was good money. I managed to take this guy to the one. It was just for, for days, eh? It was just a matter of days. Mm. So life was Nikupanda, Nakushoka, it wasn't so easy. Yeah. We struggled, we struggled. Akaenda Kamaliza in the form for Yaki again appear. Come away. You can remember by the time you had to join from one, there was nothing that we were doing. Guys, let me ah. tell you, now there, <laughs> I had finished just my class 8. That's a kuna pesa. Ni me fail. Ni me fail terribly. Ile mbaya. But mom, I have, I have to go to school. Dad, you have to go to school. Dad, Dad, I said, you have to go to school, but first, we have to know to go peleke, when you find your vocational training, when you show you may fail. That is what I was told, guys. Yeah, by the time the second born the rail, by the time she did her KCPE, so fortunately, we found when I was teaching in some school in those sites of Kano, next to me to the girls, it was called Dr. Elhefni. Mm, Dr. Elhefni, yeah. It was a private school. It was a private school. Yeah. There was a friend of mine, due to my good heart, the graduate of Yomino, Alifungwajo Shule. By that time, I was teaching at Yomino Primary. Then the Akaja can report from there to end it once a year. Shuni, it was called Reach Out High School. Dr. Yeti, High School. Where you, you didn't even have an idea of, uh, <laughs> no. of teaching in class or no, something. No, 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 I had an idea because during that time I was in the Yeah, I got yeah, into yeah, class. yeah, yeah. So going there, I was uh, very much conversant with my mm. classmates and the rest. Mm. So we started that school from one, I had to take the rail. Imagine from Kisumu to Alendu on a bike. Imagine. You remember every morning I used to carry you on a yeah, bicycle? Yeah, I remember. Yes, because there was no proper school that I could get yeah. for her during that time with Max that she got. Yeah. So by five, we had to wake up. By six, on a, moto, on a 
bicycle not even motorbike bicycle Deo tunaenda motorbike ilikuwa ijapija mm. nice to carry her tunaenda so jioni akigiva samani arudi naye nyumbani like that until it reach a time that I had to get admission for her at Achara Girls High School. Ndi akaenda, akamaliza, ya ke Achara Girls. So during that time, things have been up and down, up and down. I used to get this manena ya IBC. Ikija, sensors, I get those handouts, those those money kido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuna pereza kwa shuli. God has enabled us. Mpaka tunafika kwenye kumitika size. Yeah. Yeah. So did this affect you with mom now some merudi nyumbani umepata watu wa nyalenda and we know nyalenda mwenye iko na story na makombe na madrugs and everything so now umepata watu watu marafiki tena wapi did it even affect you with your children that's why i was saying with the slum area life is not so easy mm. the drug and substance abuse there is a lot that yeah, if you are not controlled mm. if you don't control yourself mm. here it up will affect from the initial stages it really destabilized me it almost broke my marriage because I could drink and drink and drink. And this one even brought about blood blood between my mother and even my other siblings. Yeah, yeah. Because you find you are a bright person, you are somebody who can do something, you are somebody who is respected in the community. But then due to that drinking nature, now somebody can't even respect you. Mm. You find even those, your siblings, they look down at you. Mm. They say, ah, there is nothing good that can, can, can come out of that house. The house where people are drinking. Mm. But the best part of it, the best part I like is that Mama Watoto, Mama Yadere, she's a prayerful woman. Mm. Day and night, mm. and that prayer paid. Mm. She's still prayerful. Mm. And I believe it's that prayer that has brought us up to where we are. I'm telling you, with me, by right now, I could have been long dead. I could have been buried. I couldn't have been there. I did not be for the grace of God. Mm. And I'm proud of that to be still alive up to now. Most of my age mates, the age bracket that we used to grow up with in Yalenda here, they are no longer there. Yeah, they're no longer there. That, these are generation, they are no longer mm. there. Mm. So I thank God for having given me this chance to live again but after having all the, gone all this. But how was it like uh, between you and your, your, your Tawako uh, Vijana? Because when I wrangles as in Guinea Kelele, he come in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. If you start talking, Evie, it's like, ah, Dad, stop now. That is too much. You can't talk to me when we're not for Evie, Evie, yeah? Yes. Uh, How did you feel? I felt bad. By the time I used to, when I was drunk, when I was talking to my children, I never knew that these are grown ups. It never occurred to me that these people are growing. Yeah. And they are seeing these things that we used to do. Mm. Mm. So it reached a point that they could tell me. There, by the way, I have a brother and I told Davis. Davis said, I come too cool if you're eco. I come too cool if you're eco. Just stop. I can't have conversation with you when you're like this. But that one really affected you, I know. I used to look at you and say, now. Yeah, it really affected me to some extent. But then the atmosphere that I've created, I lacked objectivity. Somebody you just be open. If you've got something, that is the nature, the culture that I brought up in my children. When you have something, you we'll just talk up. your mind. Yeah, you don't up. have to hide and fear me. So sometimes you used to have a good rapport with my children, mm. but sometimes it was hell. It was More hell. So when Most I, of the time it was hell. Drug, <laughs> until it reached a time they make me, 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 me. <laughs> because I used to shout, Uchambali <laughs> when I'm drunk, when I'm coming. But that guy is Kucha. Kucha in a manisha. In a manisha? Mbali. Mbali. Uko, Kucha uko. is a low word. Eh? So Kucha. Kucha in a manisha Mbali. And uko. Uko Mbali. Uko Mbali. Uko Mbali. Because that is what he used to tell us. You want to reason with him and he's like, Kucha. Right now we can say these stories and uh, we are laughing. But then it was bad because it even affected us in school. Uh, I'm going back to my dad. Ndasoma sangapi. Ukiweka tu vitabu unaanza kusoma hivi. Ameanza kelele. Atusomi kwa hii nyumba tunatoka tunaenda kuba kwa shosho yangu ndio tunaenda kusoma. So that's how life was until I came to realize that this is not the right way I should go. I had to bring them back. We had to sit together. Kama kuna homework we used to sit on the table we discuss mutually until mm. okay i was i was going to tell you nilikuwa na watoto wawili 
I came back in 1999. Come the year 2000, mm-hmm. then another child came into our family. Mm. In the year 2002, that was when the last one was born. So my family have got a total of six children, three beautiful ladies, uh-huh. and uh, three strong and energetic, energetic sons. Yeah, yeah. They are still alive. They are there. They are like my brothers. These are like my sisters. Whenever there is something, we sit on a table, we discuss. Really when I need to do something, I summon them. We have a meeting as a family meeting. So it has not been so easy. Yeah, it's so guys, 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 since you have a family meeting, so even then when dad used to drink, now he's no longer drinking. But now let's ask him, Aliacha Kwanini, Monali Stop, Nalipombe Alkwana Fikiria, that is the only solace that he had. Now let's just ask him, Monaliacha. Eh, uh, so many people have asked me that question because nobody can believe that I left drinking. After analyzing my life, after all these years, with my brains, with my education, with the whatever determination that I've got, I just saw myself in a mirror and I said, by now, I could be very far. Most of my age mates, most of my classmates, they are driving cars with very, very big wheels. While me, I'm languishing in poverty. So it just occurred to me, nobody coerced me into living alcohol. I also looked at myself and I said, now that my children are grown ups, they are big people, and if I'm drunk, I decided now, not, not even decided, it now just came to me that I used to be violent now. Mm-hmm. And that one, once you are violent, if you are drunk and you are violent, there is no peace in the house, there is no peace with everybody, with your neighbor, then that, is, that means the end of you. How, how old are you now, Dad? I was, I'm, I'm about 1967, that is under 2021. So that means I'm 50, yeah, 67 and 20, 21. That is 56. I'm yeah. approaching 56. Yeah. I'm 55. He's approaching 56, guys. I'm 56. So my dad have just realized his purpose at 56 years. So guys, we should pray and ask God to to allow us to know our purpose before we are old, when we are still young. So we are almost coming towards the end of this uh, of this interview. And I am so, I am so glad. I am so glad. So maybe what he would wish to tell those people who are outside there, those people who are outside there, those people who are outside there, those people who are just something. Okay, my advice to those who are drinking, you drink responsibly. If you are to drink, drink responsibly. If you are to engage in drinking, make sure you've got steady income. If you don't have steady income, I tell you, it's hell outside there. But then, it would be good if we stop drinking at all. Yeah. Right now, so many friends have tried to lure me back into it. Mm. And I say, you know, I'm the one who decided. Nobody passed me into it, and I know what I felt. When did you stop? Mm, I stopped. Uh, Is it already one year? It's not one year, it's almost one year. Yeah, I stopped drinking in part of me 2021. Last, last year. This year. Of May 2021, in fact, I'm going six months old now. Ah. Of May. And I believe I don't feel that hard, I believe that is a ban, a ban case. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, with prayers and strong willpower, everything is going to be possible. Thank you so much. Welcome. So, guys, we're coming, we've come towards the end of this interview, and we are glad it a bit to Malisa interview. Hatuna, we are so grateful, we're just so grateful. So, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to support Hapo Chini and hit that notification bell so that every time we download any video, you'll be the first person to watch. Bye!